Welcome to the Top Listing Agent Show, the place to be to stay on the cutting edge of what it takes to sell more homes in less time. Each week, your host, Shadi Bazzi, will share with you the best skill sets, systems, and strategies so you can become a top listing agent. And now, let the show begin. Welcome to the Top Listing Agent Show. This is Shadi Bazzi, and I am super excited uh, to be bringing you today the amazing Jordan Sibley. Did I pronounce your last name right, Sibley? You sure did. All right. Well, hey, welcome to the Top Listing Agent Show. Let's begin by you introducing yourself to our wonderful audience and just tell them, you know, how great you are. Oh, awesome. All right. I'll do my best. So <clears throat> I'm Jordan Sibley. My husband and I run a small expansion team with Keller Williams Realty, the Sibley Group. And we are based out of New Orleans, Louisiana. We have a team of three agents and three full-time support staff. And we are spread across two different offices that are within 30 minutes of each other. And we have been in business. Um, my husband and I took over the team about six years ago, but it began with his father 40 years ago. So it's definitely a family affair. Mm -hmm. And we are on track to close about 120 units this year, about 60 seller, 60 buyer, a pretty, pretty even split there. Um, and yeah, life is great. Love and real estate. Love it. Lo love it. Well, welcome to the show. And it's so you guys got like a family. Is it like a family business or just, you know, you took over the father's business and now it's your family's business or. Yeah, pretty much. My husband and I have taken it over. Unfortunately, my father-in-law um, passed away very untimely several years ago. And we, um, although my husband grew up in real estate, he did not get into it full time until, you know, that, that unfortunate circumstance really became a blessing and an opportunity for us. Got it. All right. So we're going to begin by, I just want to grab everybody's attention because not everybody that comes on a show or anyone, you know, most people aren't, um, you know, used to being around people who are doing 100 plus transactions a year. You guys will do 120 transactions this year. I'm just curious, is that like what you guys do? Like pretty much every single year you've been doing that number or you've been growing over the last couple of years? Is this your first year over 100 or? So this will actually be our first year over 100. Uh, the previous year we did just under 80. So we have been growing each year, adding, adding either a new sales team member or a new admin person each year. And our motto is to grow slow and grow smart. I love it. Grow slow and grow smart. So that's like an S2. Slow yeah. and smart. <laughs> love it. The analytical in me has got to break it down in a specific way. So we can, we, can, we can have fun with it. All right, so 120 transactions. I know there's a lot of people listening to the, the podcast and or watching the video and are probably saying that is a lot of deals that might require a lot of working hours. So I'm just curious, how many hours a week do you guys like put into the business? So uh, I would say myself as the director of sales, I probably put in about 30 to 40 hours each week. Uh, my husband being the lead listing agent, what we kind of refer to as the rainmaker, he is, is definitely 40 hours a week. Sometimes, you know, in a busy season, it'll be more than that. Uh, the goal as team owners, though, is as we um, progress to replacing ourselves, that it will be less than that. And we'll be focusing on just running the team. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So. Tell me a little bit about how do you all generate your business? I mean, look, there's people out there that don't ever want to do 100 transactions a year. They just want to do a couple more deals, you know, a month, et cetera. Where does the primary source of your business come from? So we have a very large database um, that we have created from multiple sources. One, every agent on our team comes with their own database, what we call our sphere of influence. And that truly is over time has proved to be the quickest, most fruitful source for our team each year. Next, um, we have several websites that we run for lead capture, both for buyer leads and for seller leads. One of our main platforms that we have started using this year is Boomtown. And that has proved to be a great resource for buyer leads. And then our repeat client business is usually a big chunk of our business each year. 
And then of course we have the occasional for sale by owner, expired listing, things of that nature. But I'd say sphere of influence um, and Boomtown, honestly, are, are our bigger chunk of where we're getting our leads from. Love it, love it, love it. So now you've given me a lot to talk to you about and we are gonna break that down. And yeah. I believe, uh, I believe that the most important system is the most neglected system in real estate, and that is your database. That is your book of business. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you say you get a good chunk of your business, you know, from, you know, repeat referral business. What do you, I'm, I'm just curious, do you have a specific like CRM that you use? Yes. So, so um, right now we're using Top Producer. I will say that um, in the next year or so, we will likely be navigating away from that and in, into the amazing technology that Keller Williams has been releasing. But for right now, once we have a property under contract, we have those um, transactions basically coordinated under top producer, whereas our new leads that are coming in that we are nurturing and following up with, those are being um, worked in Boomtown. Okay, perfect. So to to capture business from you know let, let, let's just say database okay which well, i'm talking about your past clients that are influenced or anything like that do you have a system in place that you know you have a way to keep in touch with the people in your database to generate business or does it just come to you guys because you guys are beautiful and you guys are smart and you guys are great man i wish don't we all <laughs> i wish that it just came to us and fell out of the sky no um as i'm sure you agree shaddy real estate it it's always been, it's about lead generation. No, honestly, it's about lead follow-up because you can have all the leads in the world and if you don't follow up with them, then it doesn't prove to be anything but a waste of money. So all of our leads that come in, we give them basically a rating from A plus, A, B, C, or D. And once someone falls into that category, then we have a system in our CRM that automatically tells our agents when they're supposed to call the person next. So most of our past clients are being followed up with via phone call a minimum of four times per year. That doesn't include our mailers and client events, things like that. If one of our clients is really um, one of our core advocates, like an A or an A plus, we're following up with them six to 12 times a year. Love it, love it. That's via phone. So it doesn't include mailers, like I said, internet stuff, things like that. So you're touching them in multiple different ways, not just, you know, picking up the phone, but you're also touching them somehow, some way on the internet, you know, email, mail, you know, client events, client yeah. appreciation parties, et cetera, the whole entire shebang. Yep. So what do you want to tell the person who's been talking about putting together a database for the last year or so and haven't done it? Well, your, your database is your business and honestly it doesn't matter if you're keeping a spiral bound notebook with 500 names in it that's fine you need some sort of database we certainly didn't start out spending thousands of dollars a month on these databases it, it got to that point all that matters is that you have some sort of tracking system with notes on each person you're talking to and your plans for follow-up with them Perfect. Okay. And that's exactly what I always tell all my coaching clients. I, do, I mean, I do recommend a, a CRM for people to begin with, et cetera. But I always tell them at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're using what you're supposed to be using, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, you know, notepad and paper, et cetera. You know, just have them somewhere, somehow, and have a system to make sure that you're touching these people somehow, some way. Yes. So we're both, we're both on the same page uh, with that. And then, you know, you talked about, and I, I really want to dive into this one, and I'm not sure how well you guys do, do with this or not, but, you know, you said, you know, you got to go out there and you got to generate the business. You can't just expect it to fall out of the sky. And you mentioned two of my favorite words. My two favorite words are like for sale by owners and expires, because that's how <laughs> I was able to build up my business and my clients build up the business. How often do you or, or your team members pick up the phone and call on for sale by owners and expires? So when somebody's on our team as a, as a sales agent, we give them a choice of a different lever they can focus on. And these are our lead generation levers. So we have one agent who is specifically chosen for sale by owners and expireds to be his lead generation lever because that suits his personality. He follows up with for sale by owners daily. And I think he does expireds maybe twice a week. Okay, very good. And you guys get business from that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, uh, I agree. We just took a for sale by owner listing 
that's a, we'll save that story for for another time. But yeah, I love I love for sale by owners. I love expireds. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna come back to the lead generation, but there's something else I want to talk about because you know there's a lot of people that you know get their license, they get in this business, and they think the Mercedes comes you know with with the real estate license, and does it? Oh gosh, it's so funny you said that because on my personal Facebook page you'll see I started this Facebook web series called the Unglamorous Side of Real Estate, and I started out by saying everybody thinks we we drive around in BMWs drinking Starbucks all day and we just get like money falling out of the sky. And <laughs> at least for me, the Mercedes did not fall out of the sky. It's something that you have to work towards. Any goal that you have, be it a car or building a huge business, it happens slowly and then all at once. Yes, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And, you know, talking about that, you know, that's like a, men, a mindset thing. How important is mindset for someone to do 100 plus transactions a year and or just do more transactions than what they're doing right now? How important is mindset? Mindset is everything. You can either have a scarcity mindset or a mindset of abundance. And clients can feel it when you have a mindset of scarcity. They can tell that you need this commission check. They can sense that as hard as you may try to hide it or put on a poker face. But when you come from a mindset of abundance, you're able to walk away from a listing client and say, unfortunately, I, I'm not a magician. I can't get you the price that you want. The market doesn't support it. And shake hands and part ways as friends. Because in the end, a scarcity mindset is not what's going to make you successful. You'll end up taking overpriced listings that aren't going to sell anyway, and you'll just be churning your wheels and spending money. So mindset's everything. Good. So what, it, what, it, what you know, there, there's, in, this is one of the biggest struggles that, that, that people have is, is their mindset. You appear to be someone who has a strong mindset. Were you born with a strong mindset or is it something that you have to develop over time? Absolutely not born with it. I, um, I'm very much an introvert. I am uh, very hard on myself. I have purposefully spent time over the past three years reading and taking amazing courses that are offered through, through Keller Williams and beyond on changing my mindset because it's not easy. Um, I'm really just at the level right now where I can recognize when I have those negative thoughts and have the ability to change them. And I will spend a lifetime getting better at mindset, but it is such an important part of not just real estate, but your marriage or, you know, you being a parent, everything is on about mindset. Good. So what is one thing that you've done to work on your mind that has worked for you and, or helped you in a big way that we can share with our audience so we can help them develop a, you know, a, a top notch mindset? So just knowing the power of your own thoughts and how they can truly either be poisonous or like medicine to your own body. So when you read books, like for instance, I've read the book, The One Thing. It's actually was written by Gary Keller um, and some other co-authors. That, that was a very impactful book for me. Um, the other funny one, I mean, I won't say the real title, but The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one for me. And then recently I finished my second go round of fierce conversations and it basically teaches you how to let go of your negative mindset and have a fierce conversation so that you can relieve stress from yourself and others more quickly. Love it. Okay. So we're referencing, you're referencing here reading. Yeah. Okay. How important is reading? I actually time block that into my schedule four out of the five days of the week. I set an hour for myself before I go pick up my daughter that I'm either listening to my audio book, you know, on the way home from my office, or I'm sitting down with a highlighter and not just reading, but really trying to dive into, to the words and, and, and help them come to life. You, you can't just change your mindset by saying, Oh, okay. I'm going to start thinking positive today. It's not that easy. Like they say big, learners are big earners mm -hmm. readers are leaders okay yeah. and i am i am like so huge on that like i was sharing yesterday in my listings on demand my top listing agent training uh with with the group members i said look hey i never graduated from college 
college. Not that, you know, I'm against college or education or anything like that. I did receive the education, but it's an education that I went and sought out myself. And it was all through all the books that I've read. And, you know, I constantly read. I never believe that, that I know all the answers or, or have it all because the moment that you think you have it all is the moment that you begin to stop growing. So mm-hmm. I am big on, on, on reading as well, too. And, and, and Jordan, what I would love for you to do is I know you referenced a couple of different books. I'd love for you to just recommend just one book to our audience and say, look, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're watching this video and you definitely want to grow your mindset, you definitely want to grow your business, you definitely want to have a better life, just go get this one book and go read it and do everything it says. What would that one book be? That would be The Miracle Morning. Okay. Love it. Okay. It sounds crazy. It has transformed mine and my husband's life after reading that book three years ago. All right. So everyone that's watching this and or listening to this, go pick up the Miracle Morning and read it. And then after you read it, do exactly what it tells you to do because it's going to help you develop a powerful morning routine that's going to set you up for power and abundance each and every single day. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. All right. Okay. So what do you want to talk about? Hmm. I don't know. I I think the biggest problem a lot of agents have is where do I find the business and then what do I do with it once I have it? (laughs) Great. So let's talk about where do I find the business? Where can someone go out there and generate some new business for themselves in the next 30, 60, 90 days? Where would you tell someone like, you know, someone that like there's a lot of people that are just stuck either at one transaction a month, two transactions a month, three, four, five, whatever it is. And they just want to like increase the production by one, two or three more deals every single month. Where, where should they begin to go out there and generate business for themselves? So I'll give you kind of a fun practical thing that um, I started focusing on a couple of years ago. And I closed 14 deals from it in one year. Every single time I leave a restaurant, of course, if I had a, a wonderful server, I tell them, thank you for providing such great customer service to me and my family at dinner. I really appreciate it. And in return, I just wanna give you my business card and let you know that I'm a realtor and I would just love to return the favor and answer, answer any real estate questions that you may have and um, just be a resource for you. And I have done 14 deals in one year from people at Verizon Wireless <laughs> to wow. bartenders to uh, you know waitresses. And it may not be that person directly. Maybe it's their mom. Maybe it's their cousin. But just putting yourself out there in situations where – these things are already happening. I still have to go to the cell phone store. I'm still going out to eat. Why not lead generate while I'm doing it? I love your way of thinking. I love your way of thinking. You're absolutely right. And and, and you're doing it in a non-threatening way. It's someone gave you a good service and you're like, I want to return, you know, the favor. I want to return, you know, the service, the good service you've given me. And I want to be able to, you know, service you at, you know, from the real estate level anyway, anyhow I can. So excellent idea. What's another thing that they can do? Another one is just starting in your own neighborhood and, and door knocking and making yourself a resource for your neighbors. And, and you don't go in for the kill the first time. You don't even have to talk about real estate. Just walk around and say, you know what? I mean, I've done this with my, with my four-year-old. She loves doing it. She calls it meeting the neighbors with mommy. Um, maybe we'll bake some cookies or something and we'll walk door to door and just say, hey, you know what? Nowadays, we don't really know too much about our neighbors. And I just wanted to make a couple blocks and introduce ourselves. Um, I'll, I'll let you know that I am a realtor. But that's not why I'm stopping by today. I just wanted to introduce you and let you know, here's my daughter. You might see us in the park around the corner sometimes. Stop by and say hi. Then you follow that up with marketing. Then you follow it up with a few months later, another door knocking. It, it's, it takes time, but you can just really farm and prospect your own neighborhood for a couple hours a week. Right now, you are very good at farming from what I hear. Uh, we like to think so, yes. <laughs> okay. So if, if someone doesn't have a farm and they wanted to begin a farm, how do, you, how do you, like, is there a size? Like a lot of people always ask me, well, how many homes should I begin with, et cetera? Can you walk us through how does one, like, develop a winning farm? Absolutely. I actually teach a course on this in our office, and I'm passionate about it. So... Farming starts with, you usually have some sort of association with a geographic area. Maybe it's your own neighborhood, or maybe it's a, it's a neighborhood nearby in your city, or maybe it's two or three neighborhoods. 
But what we do is once a year, we strategically break down the top neighborhoods in the areas that we service. We look at the turnover rate, which you can find in your multiple listing service. We look to see if there's any one agent that dominates more than 30% of the market and newsflash for everybody, there's usually not. So don't be scared off by an agent who thinks they have the mind share. They may have mind share, but they don't have market share. So we look at those two things. And then of course we look at how many homes are in the neighborhood and if they're in our target price bracket. Then you can break it down by, okay, how many homes are in the neighborhood and how much time per week am I gonna spend knocking doors? So our agents each have one farm and they have to door knock their farm four times a year. Now that's in conjunction with, we're usually, like I said, doing mailers or some kind of a community event in that farm, but it really isn't a lot of time. I think um, one of our buyer agents is doing some door knocking this weekend She's going to spend three hours door knocking and she'll probably get to, you know, one to two thirds of the way through the neighborhood. So it seems daunting, but it's actually a super easy way to lead generate. But you cannot go into farming expecting that all of the business you get is going to be now business. You are filling your pipeline for the future. Yeah, sometimes we get lucky and we happen upon somebody that's like, Hey, I was thinking about selling my house next month, <laughs> but that's usually not the case. It's usually three, six or 12 months out. And that gives you the opportunity to develop a relationship with those people over time. Absolutely. And, and, and here's what I found to be true for a lot of my clients is a lot of times they meet someone that, you know, doesn't necessarily want to do anything right now. And maybe it's a, someone that may never ever do a transaction with them because they're just set in that home for the remainder of their life. But as a result of forming that relationship, they point you to the neighbor that's thinking about buying or the yep. neighbor that's thinking about selling. Do you find that to be true for you as well? Oh, a hundred percent. And you have to go into it asking the right questions. You don't just want to focus on that homeowner. You want to say, who do you know from church, from work, or your kid's school that I could help. And I don't ever even ask, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? That's just not my personality. I say, who do you know that I could help? And it, um, you'd be surprised when you actually ask for a referral, you usually get them, but you gotta ask. So why do you think people are afraid to ask? They feel like they're bugging people. Okay. I was afraid to ask for a long time, but I changed my mindset. And I changed the way I was saying the script and I made it sound like Jordan and Jordan is some people. Good. So Jordan is also an introvert. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and nobody here would have ever guessed that, you know, no. this young, beautiful woman, you know, was outgoing and knows what to say and all that good stuff is an introvert. And, and, and I get this all the time. People are like, well, I'm an introvert. And, you know, my response is always like, introverts rule the world. Yeah. <laughs> the most successful people in the world are introverts. Bill Gates, introvert. Who would have ever thought like Grant Cardone is an introvert? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah. you know, so what do you want to tell the introvert? That it's okay. It takes a lot more energy from us mentally to put ourselves out there but it's not an excuse. How, how much do you want success for yourself, for your family, or if you have a team, for your team? And honestly, it's, it's what's driving you to have the level of success that you want. And for me, it's, I've got big plans for my family and my business, and it's worth me expending that extra amount of effort, even though I have to come home at the end of the day sometimes, and I tell my husband, like, you're on bath duty and dinner duty with our daughter. I just want to go sit in a bathtub with a glass of wine for an hour and decompress because I've been talking to people all day. Um, whereas my husband could talk to people 24 hours a day and be totally fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Some people are just born that way. Um, yeah. Okay, so we went back to the word mindset and then something else just showed up right now in, in what you said, you know, in, you know, I'll say it in different words. It's like, sounds to me like you're connected with your why, like you are connected with your purpose. Like there's a reason why you do this. Yeah. Okay. 
And, and, and what I found is that most people, you know, their only why is to just do a transaction so they can pay the bills right now. And there's nothing greater than that on, on their agenda. And I wholeheartedly believe like that's the reason why they always do just one deal at a time and they never break through. So how important is, is it for, for a person to have a big why, a big vision to really understand why they're doing what they're doing? It's so important, not just in, in real estate career, in anything that you do. Um, if you don't have something driving you, then your financial thermostat is always going to be relatively low. That, you know, I'm surviving deal to deal to deal. My big why is that I really love real estate. I love coming to work. And doing those activities, though they may not always be fun, heck, a lot of the times they aren't fun, it affords my family amazing opportunities that they deserve, like a wonderful vacations, great schooling for my daughter, um, the, the ability to enable us financially if we want to have another child. Those are the plans that my husband and I have sat down and made together, and we think about those, we actually sit down and talk about them weekly. We don't just say, oh, I know my big why. Write it down. Discuss it with your spouse or a friend or a colleague. Have someone to keep you accountable for why you get up and do what you do every day. Love it. Love it. All right. So I'm going to give a little bit of coaching if that's okay. Of course. Okay. So one of, one of the things that I do, you know, with all, you know, m you know my, my students and, and listings on demand, et cetera, is, you know, in, in the first seven days, I say, look, we got seven days to get your mind right, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter if I teach you how to generate a lead or how to convert the lead. If we ain't got the right mindset, if we ain't got the right, you know, goals, if, if we don't have the right connection for why we're doing what we're doing, you ain't never going to do what it is that you're supposed to, to be doing. And I'm willing to bet that 99% of the people who are watching this interview already know exactly how to do that extra one deal or two deals every single month. Like they've heard it from their broker, they've heard it from their manager, they've heard it on these interviews, they see it online all day, every single day, yet they just cannot get them, themselves to do it. So I'm talking directly to you, the person who is stuck right now, what I want you to do, and I want you to do it like right now, like, or in the next 24 minutes, not even the next 24 hours. I want you to write down this question. And the question is, if life was as good as it could possibly be, what would it look like? If life was as good as it could possibly be, what would it look like? Okay. How would I physically be? Okay. How would my mind be? What would my family life be like? What would my relationships be like? Who would I be being to my community? How much money would I be making? Where would I be living? What kind of car would I be driving? What kind of business would I own? What kind of vacations would I take? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you make a list of all of that and you review that by yourself, for yourself every single day and build a connection that that's who you are destined to become, okay? And you visit that piece of paper every single day, and you do that for the next 30 days, I guarantee you within 30 days, you will wake up differently. You will feel differently. You will walk differently. You will eat differently. You will speak differently, and everything will begin to change. Mm -hmm. Agree? Absolutely. You can't disagree with me, Jordan. You know that, right? No, I'm not doing <laughs> I don't want to disagree with you anyway. Exactly. And, and that's exactly what you do. I mean, you, you've like literally laid out everything that you want, everything that's important to you, you know, your daughter, your marriage, your, you know, your, your, your business, you know, where you want to live and all that stuff. And you and your husband are constantly in communication about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every single day you can either talk about the road you're traveling and where you're trying to get to, or you can talk about the obstacle and the challenge. Yep. Okay. The obstacles and the challenges are always going to appear no matter at what level of production you get to. New, they say new level, new devil, okay? And what's going to get you through that is why you want to accomplish your goal. So that is awesome. Let's go back to the farming. So we tell everyone, pick a neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay? Take a look at the turnover rate. 
go out there, introduce yourself, start building relationships. Don't expect a transaction to appear in, you know, fall into your lap in the next 24 hours, but it will as long as you do the work. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's the key words. Do the work. Most people don't want to do the work. And the reason they don't want to do the work, it goes back to they don't want it bad enough. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So when you, when you, you have, you obviously have team members. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who's responsible for coaching and training your team members? I do some lower level coaching for our team. Okay. But through my coaching training, I have learned, and it's really apparent that the manager can't be the direct coach because in the end, I have a direct say so as to their outcome and future. So my husband and I have a, uh, we actually have a real estate coach. We've had her for three years and we have weekly calls with her. And then she has a once a month call with our team so that they can have that safe space to talk to a, a neutral third party that's not judging them. That's not, you know, in charge of hiring or firing. And I strongly believe in having a coach because keeping yourself accountable is not something most people are able to do. I'm not able to do it all the time. Um, so I, I cannot say enough about the power of coaching. Okay. So everyone needs a coach and or a mentor. Yes. And the person that doesn't have one right now, what do you want to tell that person? It is absolutely worth your investment. Um, I, my coach costs me upwards of $1,200 a month. That makes some people go, oh my gosh, I can't afford that. Well, guess what? We can't afford to not have a coach because a good coach helps you see the potential in yourself that you don't see. They help you change your mindset when you kind of get down in the dumps and they just help you see things from a different perspective. So get a coach, even if you have to start with your broker or just, you know, a top agent in your office, get someone to help keep you accountable and give you advice and best practices. Perfect. Love it. Love it. I am huge on mentorship and I know it's biased for me to say I'm huge on mentorship because I'm a mentor, um, <laughs> but, you know, and this mentor has a mentor, you know, we all, we all need a mentor. Uh, because a lot of times what your coach can do is he can see your blind spots that you can't see for yourself and he can navigate you around the obstacles and, and challenges and show you certain things that you cannot see yourself. And I think one of the biggest things, and tell me if this is true for you as well too, one of the biggest things that you know a mentor can offer you is not just the know-how on how to generate business, et cetera, but mm -hmm. it's also like literally believing in yourself and believing that you are good enough and believing that you are worthy. Absolutely. I, um, one of the most powerful questions my coach asked me at the end of last year when we were planning for this year is, um, we said, you know, oh yeah, we're planning to do a hundred units. And I, and, and I, I said, I just don't know. She said something like, um, well, why not shoot for higher? I said, I, I don't know what our rate of growth, I, I, rate of growth. I'm not sure that we can achieve that. And now the simple question she asked me was what would happen if you did? And that just had the biggest aha, like, well, life would be even better if I far surpassed my goal. So now every person on our team and our team as a whole, we have a goal and we have what is called our stretch goal that we, we will stop at nothing to achieve the goal, but we will always have the stretch goal in mind as well. I love it. See, just one question totally added at least 20 transactions to your production this year. The yep. answer to one question. Yep. Okay. And that if you multiply your average commission check by just 20 deals, and then you take, you know, the fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a year you're paying for coaching, you 10x, easy 10x the rate of return on that investment. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do, do you personally pick up the phone and do any prospecting, Jordan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I do. Every single member of our team um, who is licensed, lead generates every single day. So today I was on the phone. Um, today was a short day for me. I was on the phone for about an hour doing some lead generation with um, following up from people from an open house last week. And um, others was just follow up with past clients, checking in, asking for referrals. So yes, um, 
our agents are expected, if you're on the listing side, to make 100 contacts a week, voice-to-voice -voice communication. If you are on our buyer team, this is just how our team operates, they make 40 contacts a week is the standard. Most of them make much more than that to achieve their stretch goal. So yes, everyone prospects on our team. Good, how often do you guys do open houses? Pretty much every weekend, if we don't have any listing going active that particular week, my agents will sometimes host an open house for someone else in the office if hosting open houses is their lead generation lever. Awesome. And how fast do you follow up on the open house leads? Like if you did an open house on Saturday or Sunday, you'd follow up like literally within the next 24 hours? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a simple text after... Um, we always provide an item of value at the open house, you know, give them a reason to, to call back. Um, so yeah, within 24 hours, if, if you're super busy the next day, no more than 48 hours. Got it. And do you input those people into your database immediately or no? Usually at the open house. Yes. At the open house immediately. Okay. And you have yep. a, do you have a follow-up campaign, like a drip campaign that immediately follows up with those buyer leads? Yes. Yep. They get put on a, a new lead drip campaign. And then of course they get that phone call within the 24 to 48 hours. Got it. And from your open houses, do you usually generate more buyer leads or more seller leads or, you know, what would be the percentage breakdown of that? I would say, I'd say 70% buyer leads though on some, in some years we've, we've, we've had the scales flip the other direction. So it, it also depends on what types of questions you're asking. You know, you don't just want to look at someone coming into an open house as, oh, they're a buyer lead. Most people who are looking to buy have something to sell or they know someone who has something to sell. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 I have a client I work with and he's like, when I do an open house, I'm not just looking for the buyer. I'm looking for the buyer that also has to sell. Right. And that's like two deals right away. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So any open house tips on how to have an effective open house? Like, do you guys do anything to generate traffic? Like, you know, for example, you know, last week on, on the top listing agent show, we had the amazing Kyle whistle. I don't know if you know Kyle or not, but he's amazing. And if you haven't heard the interview, you definitely want to check it out. What he does for an open house is he has a system to where it's like, you know, an open house for me is like a movie that's coming out like this weekend. And it's yeah. like, here's the trailer for it. Like, here's what we do on Monday. Here's what we do on Tuesday. Here's what we do on Wednesday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, is there, do you guys do anything to like drive traffic to the open house? Can you give a tip or two? Absolutely. And, and he is so right. You cannot just stick a sign in the yard and hope people are going to show up to your open house. It doesn't work that way. You have to be purposeful about it. So on our, our weekly team meeting at the beginning of the week, we decide who's doing what open house. If the listing goes active on a Wednesday, we have already ensured that the just listed postcards are going to hit 200 of the closest neighbors on Wednesday. We place an open house sign in the yard no later than Tuesday for the, what, even if it's a Saturday or Sunday open house, doesn't really matter. So that's out, you know, the just listed flag is out. Um, our marketing coordinator is designing a flyer so that one to two days before the open house, the agent is expected to knock 30 doors, 10 to the left, 10 to the right, and 10 across the street or 10 behind, however it falls. Um, and then the morning of the open house, you know, these, um, the, the policies differ from city to city, but the morning of the open house, getting out there as early as they can and putting out no less than 12 directionals. Well, okay, so basically you're putting the signage out there, the just listed you know, cards, the just listed flag, and then you're actually going out there door knocking a minimum of 30 doors around there to introduce yourself to the neighbors, let them know you took this property and you're holding it open and all that stuff. Yeah, because you're killing two birds with one stone. You're prospecting yeah. as you're door knocking, and then you're also letting people know about the open house. And of course, I didn't mention the standard, you know, of course, we're promoting it online through all of our different channels there as well. Got it. Are you big on Facebook marketing by any chance? We, we are good at Facebook marketing. We certainly have room for growth, um, but we do always have a video tour of all of our homes that we promote with a paid Facebook ad announcing the open house. Beautiful. And do you personally do any videos yourself? 
I don't. Our marketing coordinator handles all of that. We, we hire a professional photographer for every single property that we have. Um, and he puts together the video montage and all the advertising. Um, I took one look at a Facebook ad dashboard and I was just like, I shut my computer down. I'm like, I don't even know what this means. Yeah, we, we, we did that yesterday in my listings on demand training. And uh, I brought everybody on board and I was like, here's what it looks like. And here's what you do. And like three minutes into it, I was like, who's already overwhelmed? And everybody <laughs> like raised their hand. And I was like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I hear you. Awesome. All right. So look, we're, we're about 40 minutes into the interview. I don't want to hold up your, your whole entire day. Um, any, any final words of wisdom, anything you want to share without me asking you a question or anything like that with our audience? Just maybe two, two or three big things. If you're just in real estate to make money, it, it's, it's going to be hard to be successful if that's your only purpose. We are taking people's lives in our hands and helping them with what, probably the biggest financial transaction of many people's lives. And we don't take that delicately. So having a mindset of having a servant heart is so important. So I find the people that really thrive and succeed in this business have that servant heart. So it kind of goes back to like you mentioned, having that big why. Why are you in real estate? Why do you get up and come to the office every day? Second thing would be, like we already talked about, changing your mindset. That is something that happens very slowly. But not only your mindset, choose who you surround yourself with because you choose to let negative thoughts affect you. It's really hard not to choose negative thoughts if you're constantly surrounded by negativity. So pay attention to who you interact with socially and professionally. And the third thing is get a coach. Definitely get a coach. Love it. Love it. Is there a quote that you live by? Like, do you have like a favorite quote? I do. I do. Um, I was a cheerleader in college, a cheer to LSU. And this was a quote that we all said, the whole team held hands after every practice and said this, and I love it. It's I'm one, but only one. I cannot do everything, but I can do some things. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do by the grace of God, I will do. Man, I love it. I love it. I am going to turn that into a quote and we're going to like, <laughs> like we're going to blast it. We'll give you credit for it as well too. That is, that is amazing. So you've given them a quote. You already recommended a book. You shared with our audience, you know, some tips on open house, some tips on, you know, farming, some tips on prospecting, some tips on you know, they're working their database and past clients and centers of influence. We, 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 we dived in and talked a lot about mindset. Uh, I think this was a great interview. I enjoyed having you on. The 25,000 people who are going to watch this and listen to it, et cetera, are absolutely going to, you know, love in everything you shared with them. They're going to be grateful for everything you shared with them. And some of those people are going to want to, like, send you a referral and or reach out to you to connect with you. So how can people get a hold of the amazing Jordan and her husband and team? Absolutely. They can reach out to us. You can look us up on Facebook or LinkedIn, the Sibley Group at Keller Williams. Also, our, our, real, estate, our real estate website is SibleyRealtyGroup.com. You can fill out a contact form. It'll come straight to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love to share anything that's helped me because none of us have figured all this out on our own. We all get better and elevate the industry as a whole when we help each other. So I'm, I'm here to answer questions or do anything I can. Awesome. And that, that's something that I live by. It's like, you know, the, the old model was, you know, ask and you shall receive. And, mm -hmm. you know, what I teach now is give and you shall receive. And that's exactly why we are giving freely and, and, and lovingly, and when you come from a space of, you know, contribution, that's when you really activate the laws of abundance, you know, and that's mm -hmm. how you eliminate, you know, what, you know, any lack you may be experiencing in your life and or your business. Jordan, thank you very much. We loved having you and we look forward to having you again on the show sometime again in the future. So let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.